Welcome to the Jewelry Resellers Podcast, your go-to source for all things shiny, sparkly, and of course, profitable. I'm your host, Desiree, and I'll be your guide on this dazzling journey through the world of reselling jewelry. We'll be diving deep into the art and science of reselling, uncovering valuable tips, insider secrets, and sharing stories from successful jewelry resellers. We'll explore market trends, industry news, and even discuss how to find those hidden gems just waiting to be discovered in thrift stores, estate sales, and beyond. So if you're dreaming of turning your hobby into a hustle, or if you're a seasoned pro looking to stay at the top of your jewelry reselling game, join me each week for insights, stories, and more on the Jewelry Resellers Podcast. Well, hello, jewelry friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Jewelry Resellers Podcast. My name is Desiree, and of course, I am your jewelry reselling bestie. Today, we're going to talk about how to maximize your margins, and we're going to discuss pricing strategies for jewelry resellers. Now, I got a question last week Well, actually, it was a comment on one of my YouTube videos. And one of you asked how to figure out how to price your jewelry items. I think she said that she struggled or she couldn't figure out exactly what is a good or a fair or a profitable selling price as it relates to reselling jewelry. All right. And there's some things that are unique to us as jewelry resellers. And those are the things that we're going to talk about. And we are going to really dive deep into in this episode. So before we get into that, you know, I always like to remind you to head on over to our website, which is JewelryResellersPodcast.com, because there you can sign up for our newsletter, and that will give you access to a document that I think is really helpful, especially if you're just getting started with jewelry reselling, and that is the 20 best-selling vintage jewelry brands that I think all resellers should know. All right, so you can access that list for free, as well as listen to past episodes and read some blog posts and all kinds of good stuff I have for you over there. All right, so again, head on over to the website, jewelryresellerspodcast.com. All right, let's get into today's topic. Like I said, we're going to talk about how to maximize your margins. We're going to dive deep into pricing strategies for jewelry resellers. Now, as a full-time jewelry reseller, or even if you're just doing this part-time or as a hobby, the end goal really is to make money. Now, some of us are in this just because we love jewelry. (laughs) We, We collect jewelry. We wear jewelry. We gift jewelry to people that we think love jewelry too but really I think a lot of us do this because we are at least hoping to make some money we're hoping that you know we can do something we love and that we enjoy and that we're passionate about and that it can also bring in some additional income or for some of us bring in a full-time income all right so we really need to be clear about figuring out how to price our items correctly so we can maximize the profits that we want to make intend to make or will make now i want to start off by saying this there is not a fixed standard markup All right, because a lot of people say, well, should I sell this piece for double what I paid, three times what I paid, four times what I paid? And again, that is going to depend on the type of jewelry that you're selling, the demand and the uniqueness and or condition of the piece. All right. But I will say this. Typically, most resellers mark up their jewelry between 50 and 300 percent of their cost. All right. So that's 50, 5, 0 to 300 percent of their cost. Now, that is a very, very general range. It's not going to be exact or, you know, specific for a lot of us. But like I said, because so many people ask me this, I wanted to give you a very loose guideline so you can figure out how to price your jewelry items. 
So let's start by talking about some of the key things or the key factors that you need to pay attention to that will help you determine the right price for your jewelry pieces. And of course, number one is the cost of acquisition or the cost of goods. You know, we wanna really look at how much we paid for the item. Now this is again gonna vary for a lot of us because some of us buy our jewelry piece by piece to resell, some of us buy bulk lots, and a lot of us do a combination of the two. All right, so again, it depends on how much you paid for the jewelry piece. Now the other thing you wanna think about is doing some research and figuring out what similar items are currently selling for on platforms like eBay, Etsy, Ruby Lane, Poshmark, and so forth. So remember, when we're doing our research, we are looking at the prices that similar items have sold. A lot of times people will go on eBay and they'll say, oh wow, this necklace is selling for $200, or I should say someone is asking $200. But when you look at the sold listings for that same type of necklace it may only be selling in the 50 to 60 dollar range all right so we want to make sure that we are accurately doing our research and we are studying and we are comparing sold prices or sold listings all right, now there's a lot of ways you can research this. Of course, eBay is the main one, but you can also go on websites like WorthPoint and things like that in case you have something really unique or really, you know, truly rare. And you can get an accurate gauge of what this particular item could potentially sell for. Now, the third thing we want to think about is materials. Items made from precious metals and gemstones typically will have a much higher selling price. All right, now some people like to price these types of items according to the metal weight and the gem quality. Some people take into consideration the entire piece and you know the designer, if there is one, the branding, if there is one, and the overall look or uniqueness or rarity of the jewelry piece. Now remember this too, because the price of precious metals will fluctuate in value. So you want to pay attention on the, or you want to pay attention to what gold is selling at, what silver is selling at, and pay attention to those market trends and those market indicators, because that could also affect the price that you can sell that particular jewelry piece for. All right, next up we do want to think about the brand and the rarity of the piece. I kind of touched on this earlier. Designer or rare vintage pieces will command higher prices. Now also, sometimes the timing will affect the price of your jewelry. Because if something is currently really popular or really trendy and really in demand, you know, that could definitely impact how much you can get for a certain jewelry piece. But we're talking about brand and rarity here. So of course, well-known brands like Tiffany, Cartier, David Yerman, for example, will always hold premium pricing. And sometimes these particular brands do not even have to be in pristine condition depending on what the piece is. You know, there's people out there who just love Tiffany jewelry and they will buy it even if it's not necessarily perfect or maybe it's got, you know, some flaws here and there. So again, you wanna study all of that and see if similar pieces like yours uh, have sold and how much have they sold for. So in general, you're gonna to have to do some research here as it relates to pricing your jewelry because there really isn't a a specific, you know, across the board answer. All right, the next thing we want to consider is condition. Now, when I have talked to jewelry resellers and also people who sell jewelry on consignment, they have told me that condition is everything. If you have something in mint or excellent or like new condition, of course, you can command much higher prices. All right, now, that's not to say that a piece that has damage or maybe tarnished or maybe missing something in some way 
It doesn't mean that those pieces won't sell. Of course they will. But you're probably not going to get top dollar for those pieces. And I think we all, we all know that. But I have sold pieces that have been missing stones, especially name brand pieces, and people will still buy it because there's a lot of people out there who like to do their own repairs, or maybe they want to take apart the jewelry and use those, you know, findings or clasps or stones or whatever for something else. There's a lot of people out there who like to upcycle jewelry as well. All right, the last thing or the last factor I want you to really think about when you're determining the right price for your jewelry is demand and trends. And I talked about this a little bit earlier because jewelry trends will change. And sometimes, you know, out of the blue, something will be popular overnight. And one example that I can think of right now is uh, Taylor Swift had I can't remember the necklace, but there was a certain necklace that she was wearing and then suddenly everybody wanted that same necklace or at least something similar. And that was a trend that happened really, really quickly and I think it may even still be popular today. But you never know, you know, sometimes uh, something can pop off and be, and be uh, in demand very, very quickly. And of course, if that's something you have, you can definitely ask for more money for those jewelry pieces. All right, so the pricing can fluctuate, like I said, based on current demand. And sometimes um, you really need to uh, tap into these trends or the popularity of certain jewelry pieces while they're hot in order to get you know, the biggest bang for your buck, so to speak. All right, so those are the key factors that you wanna think about. I'll go over them again. It is the cost of goods or how much you paid for the item. Number two is your market research. You want to compare and look at what similar items are selling for. Number three, it's the materials, all right? We want to take into consideration if this is precious metal, certain gemstones, and so forth. Number four is the brand and the rarity or the uniqueness. And um, I talked about this. This is like the designer, maybe a certain style, maybe a certain jewelry era, you know, all of those things you want to take into consideration. Number five is the condition. Remember, condition is everything for the most part. And of course, if you have something in pristine condition, you will definitely get top dollar for it. And then number six is the demands, the trends, and the popularity of the jewelry. And that can definitely dictate how much you can charge or how much you can expect to sell that piece for. All right, now we're gonna move into a pricing formula. Now remember, at the beginning of this episode, I did say that you can typically mark up your jewelry between 50 to 300% of the cost, you know, what you paid for the piece. All right, so again, in general, we want to do a double or a triple markup depending on the jewelry piece itself. Now remember, it's gonna take you some education, some knowledge, and some research in order to figure out if that makes sense for your particular jewelry items, all right? Because sometimes it will not make sense, you know, and sometimes you may be able to mark up the piece four or five times and that could make sense. All right, so for example, if you bought a necklace for $50, you can reasonably price it at anywhere between 100, in some cases on up to $200, based on its value and demand. Now again, this is not going to be across the board, but it gives you an idea of what you can typically expect your jewelry piece to sell for. Now some of us may not be able to mark up our pieces that much, and some of us may buy a jewelry piece for $50 and we would be happy to sell that piece at say 75, 80, even $90, depending on how quickly you can move that piece or even maybe you have a lot of them and you want to move them and you just need to make the money or you just need the space back in your storage or whatever the case may be. Now, usually um, I like to price my jewelry items at least three times the amount I paid for it. And it doesn't always work out that way. 
but that's usually what I strive for. So let's say I buy a piece for $10, I'm looking to sell that piece for at least $30, but I will go as low as 25. All right, again, it depends on the type of jewelry, right? And of course, a higher, a higher end <laughs> design or a higher end brand, it's gonna be much bigger dollar amounts. All right, but the other thing too is I also want you to think about how quickly do you wanna move your jewelry pieces? Because sometimes we are willing to take a lower price to sell the item faster. Now that's not always the case, but I have talked to resellers who just need to make the money or they just want to clear out a bunch of older, older inventory. And so they're a little bit more flexible on the price. All right, so again, this is gonna to have to be a decision that you make for yourself and for your business and figure out does this make sense for me and is this something that I'm okay with because a lot of times we want to get the money back so we can reinvest that into our business or we can go and buy better jewelry inventory all right so the other thing you want to think about as it relates to a pricing formula and that is your own uh, competitive edge maybe making competitive adjustments in some way so you want to compare your price or your prices to your competitors and adjust if necessary to remain competitive you know are there you know 10 20 50 other resellers selling the same exact thing or do you have something that's not as common or do you have something that's in much better condition than what the other resellers are selling that same piece for? So all of these things come into play here. Now let me really quickly kind of tap on or discuss luxury jewelry items because I know there's a lot of us who are looking to move into that category of higher end luxury fine jewelry pieces. All right, so when we're talking about the luxury items for high-end designer or fine jewelry, you can expect to mark up those pieces two times up to five times, depending again on the piece, especially for rare or signed jewelry pieces. All right, now this is kind of where you may want to get your jewelry appraised depending on what it is. Um, if you're gonna be selling on eBay, you, Depending on the price, you may have to go through the authentication process on eBay. And I talked about some of this in the previous episode where we were talking about jewelry appraisals and so forth. So again, it just depends on what the piece is. That usually will determine how much of your markup or what the markup will be, and then uh, how much you want to invest as it relates to getting the piece appraised or anything related to that. All right, but you always wanna be transparent about any hallmarks or authenticity certifications that come with that particular jewelry piece. All right, because that will allow you to get the most you can potentially get for that piece. Because if you're saying, hey, I got this you know, piece, uh, appraised and this is what it's worth according to a jewelry appraiser or I've got you know this piece has been verified authentic I do have the certification or the paperwork to prove that then that will allow you to command top dollar for that piece all right now you also want to pay attention to the pricing strategies as it relates to you know, understanding the market trends and demand like we talked about earlier. Because you you may price something, let's say, at $400 or even $100, but then, you know, three months, six months go by, and maybe you have to adjust the pricing to some, you know, to some degree. Maybe you can ask a little bit more. Maybe you might need to, to ask for a little bit less in order to move the piece. Again, it just depends on how quickly you need to turn over that inventory and also what similar pieces are currently selling for on the market, on the jewelry resale market. All right, so regularly revisiting your pricing strategies and understanding market trends and demand will help you optimize, or in this case, maximize your profitability. Pricing jewelry for reselling, you know, is something that 
it takes a while too to learn this and I've been doing this going on almost five years now and you know it's not like I have all the answers and I still kind of struggle just like you all do when I get something and I have no idea <laughs> I have no idea what it's selling for or I have no idea what I have you know so I'm doing the research too and I'm still learning all right so that's the other thing I want to throw out there is that give yourself time and don't feel rushed or pressured to figure out a price right away you know but at the same time don't sit on something for months and months and months and never list it because you just you know for whatever reason aren't willing to do the research or aren't willing to see what else is out there or even to learn you know what similar jewelry pieces are currently selling for all right so now we are going to move into like I said I guess the specifics on how to price price your jewelry and a lot of this we've kind of already covered but I do want to really, really give you more information because sometimes, you know, the only research a lot of people do is eBay. And while eBay is great, I'm not going to say it isn't. That's not the only way to research jewelry. Now, of course, of course, that's probably going to be the fastest way and the most familiar way. But there's other things and other options for us out there. All right. And we don't want to, again, feel pressured or rushed as it relates to figuring out the pricing for our jewelry. All right. So now we are going to talk about some of the steps to ensure that you are competitive with your jewelry pricing. And these are the steps that are going to help you maximize the profitability as it relates to reselling your jewelry. All right, so I already talked about this, but step one is to research the market prices. Um, like I said, a lot of people will only check eBay, but you want to check other platforms as well, because a lot of times what I have seen is that certain pieces will sell on Etsy at a much higher cost than they will on eBay. And the other thing about selling jewelry on Etsy is sometimes uh, you have way less competition depending on the piece, right? Because eBay, it's like, you know, there's sometimes hundreds of people selling the same thing. But on Etsy, sometimes there isn't as many people selling the same thing. And so you can require, or I should say, you can ask for a much higher price for your jewelry. All right, so try to branch out and see what your jewelry pieces could potentially be selling for on other platforms. Yes, eBay is great. I'm not going to say it's not, but it's not the only place in town where people are looking to resell or buy jewelry. Okay. Uh, you can also check sites like Poshmark, Ruby Lane. I think we talked about that. Uh, also First Dibs. Um, you know, see, see what else is out there. Other platforms sometimes, like I said, may not have as many people selling the same item. All right, next up, we want to look at the completed sold listings. Remember, it's not what the item is currently listed as, but it's what the completed sold listings show or indicate because that will give you an idea of what people are willing to pay. All right, we talked about this too, and that is evaluating the materials and the condition. All right, we said precious metals and gemstones usually increase the value of the piece and also the condition. Is this piece in pristine condition or does it have a little bit of wear? Does it have any type of flaw or damage? Now, usually as it relates to vintage or antique pieces, a lot of times those pieces do not have to be in perfect condition because a, a lot of people are willing to buy the piece because of its age and they understand that, hey, I know if this piece is 50, 75, 100 years old, it's not going to look <laughs> exactly how it did when it was first made or first purchased. All right. So again, this is where your knowledge is going to have to kick in and really being fully aware and fully educated about what you have. So like I said, vintage or antique pieces may have a higher resale value and they may not need to be in perfect condition. 
All right, the next step, I talked about this too, the brand or the designer, like we said, pieces like Tiffany, Cartier, Chanel, whatever. Uh, of course, those are going to command premium pricing, especially if they're pieces that are very, very rare or very, very old. Um, and you always want to make sure that you do have these signatures and that you verify that those pieces are authentic. I do have to say that Tiffany is probably one of the most uh, faked or counterfeited uh, jewelry brands out there, you know, with good reason. So really make sure that you get that piece verified because you do not want to uh, get called out or, or get yourself into any trouble for selling something that's not authentic. All right, now we also talked about unique and rare designs, sometimes an unmarked piece just because, you know, it's so rare or so uh, different or one of a kind or unique or whatever can fetch higher prices because it is so exclusive, it is so unique, it is so hard to find. All right, so I'm thinking about Juliana jewelry as it relates to this. Remember, Juliana jewelry is not typically marked and so most people who find these these pieces are willing to pay top dollar because they are so stunningly beautiful and so outrageously unique and that's just one example all right that's just one example so again it's always going to be your knowledge your experience and you doing your due diligence as it relates to your research Okay, now I did talk about this too a little bit earlier, and this is taking into consideration the age and the historical, val historical value or the provenance of a jewelry piece. In other words, who owned it before you or who has owned the piece before it got to you. All right, sometimes a jewelry piece will command top dollar just because it belonged to somebody famous or it, it uh, is something that was a very popular piece because there's a lot of history behind it. Uh, sometimes pieces will demand more money because they have sentimental value. All right. So again, uh, think about all of that, especially if you have antique jewelry pieces, some vintage pieces as well, or pieces from very notable jewelry eras like Art Deco or Victorian. Those tend to command more value and those tend to be more in demand as well. All right, next up, we talked about a competitive markup. Like I said, the range in general is marking up anywhere from 50% on up to 200 or even 300%, depending on the, the actual piece. So, you know, there's really no way of getting around it. You're gonna have to do some research or you're just gonna have to be super knowledgeable as it relates to this stuff. I know a lot of people get overwhelmed with the research and some people actually don't enjoy it and to you know, totally understandable. I totally get that. But I think the education and being informative as a reseller um, is really going to give you a, a, an edge. It's going to give you a competitive edge because the more you know, the more you will be able to tap in to little uh, areas of jewelry resale that most people have no clue about. I think one of the things we have to get comfortable with as jewelry resellers is that it's not a fast way to make money. And it's not something you can just kind of step into and expect to be so knowledgeable and know everything about everything and then start using that, that knowledge or lack thereof to make money or not make money. All right, so one of the things I enjoy about being a jewelry reseller is doing the research and learning about the jewelry. Now, I love hearing the stories. I love, <laughs> you know, um, researching, you know, who wore this and why this particular jewelry was popular at this particular period and, you know, in time. Um, so we really need to get comfortable with that because that is going to uh, really determine how successful you are as a jewelry reseller, all right? Especially if you want to get into the higher priced items. All right, so we also want to pay attention to trends and things like that. I talked about that as well. Jewelry trends do fluctuate, so you want to adjust your prices 
accordingly, of course, to reflect current consumer interests. All right, this is things like chunky chains, minimalist designs, maybe a certain type of style. Okay, and remember a lot of times jewelry trends will mirror or be parallel to fashion trends. So whenever you see what's popular as it relates to fashion, you wanna pay attention to what is also popular as it relates to accessories and jewelry as well. Okay, uh, my last little tip for you is to consider offering discounts or bundles. Now, of course, it depends on how you sell your jewelry. If you're selling piece by piece, uh, you could offer a discount. But remember, you want to price your jewelry in a way that when you do offer a discount, you're not you're not hurting your profits that much. Like you still wanna be, be profitable, even if you offer a discount or you do a sale or you do a bundle or a lot. Okay, so always pay attention to your pricing strategy as it relates to that. In other words, let's say you, you, you price your jewelry with 50% markup and you're still making money, like would you still be profitable if you gave a 20% discount on that piece like later on down the line? Like are you still making money? All right, now of course I'm not saying to price your, your jewelry pieces so high that you know, you're still, <laughs> you know, you're still making, making a lot um, if you do offer a discount. Um, but you know, that's something we have to think about too because I know a lot of jewelry resellers they price their, their jewelry high, or I should say higher, with the intention of offering a sale, and it's actually not really a sale, because let's say you price it at 50% markup, and then you give a 10% discount, but, but buyers are pretty savvy, right? They can recognize you know, a true discount or a true sale. All right, but again, this is going to this is going to be unique to you and your business. This may or may not work for you. But sometimes we get to the you you know, we get to the point where we need to move inventory and we need to clear some stuff out cuz it's been sitting for months or in, you know, some cases it's been sitting for years and we want to get that money or that cash flow coming in and so we will mark down our items. I've done this many, many times in my business. And sometimes I've um, even taken a loss. Now, taking a loss, I'm not saying that's what you have to do, but what I've done is I've taken a loss on some pieces, but then I've made really good money on other pieces, and so it kind of balances itself out. Okay, so you're really gonna have to pay attention to what's coming in, you know, and what you're paying for the pieces and keep track of all of that, because there's gonna be some pieces where you make oh my gosh, so much, <laughs> so much money or so much profit. And then there's gonna be pieces where you just break even or sometimes even take a loss. Now, I, of course, I know none of us wanna do that. But remember, if you're selling, especially if you are a volume seller, all of that will average itself out, all right? So um, I know some resellers will say, hey, some money is better than no money. So it just depends on what's going on with you, with your business, with your cash flow and all of that stuff. You need to take that into consideration to really be, um, I guess, to be informed or aware enough to see what's going to work for you and what's not. All right. So to move inventory, consider bundling items or offering discounts. And this could be seasonal. This could be promotional. It could be whatever um, to to make sure that you're still profitable. And remember, there's gonna be some pieces where you make a lot of money and there's gonna be some pieces where you just break even or even lose money, but it's, it's going to all kind of average itself out, okay? And, and I say that from experience because that has happened to me. You know, and I don't like to lose money and I don't like to just break even, but sometimes that's what happens, especially, like I said, when you're trying to uh, get money to reinvest into your business or you want to move pieces that maybe you shouldn't have bought or you're like this is just not good I just want to get rid of it so I can buy something better all right that's definitely some you know something that you probably will experience at some point in your jewelry reselling career 
All right, so by researching and understanding the materials and considering the market demand, you can definitely price your jewelry effectively for resale. Okay, so these are some of the things that I want you to think about. These are some of the things that you are going to have to take into consideration and really spend some time figuring out because all of our businesses are different. All of us have different goals and what may work for me may not work for everybody and vice versa. Okay, so I guess the other thing too I really want you to think about is what you know, what are you going to feel good with? You know, because some of us, like I said, do this for a hobby, but a lot of us are doing this with the intention of making money. And if you wanna make money consistently, or if you wanna make money, um, you know, to hit a certain goal or certain targets during the day, you really have to have a system and a strategy in place. All right, and you really need to be solid on your pricing, especially if you're trying to move items very, very quickly. So all of these things are things we wanna make decisions about, and then we want to tweak as we go along, because what works now may not work a month from now, may not work six months from now. And so we really want to be informed as it relates to what is going to work and what isn't going to work for our business. All right, so that is what I have for you for today's episode. Now, I would like to hear from you. Is there anything I may have missed or are there other things that maybe you take into account when you are figuring out a pricing strategy for your jewelry? You know, because I may have missed something, but I hope I didn't (laughs) because I really, really thought about this just from my own experience, uh, the experience of other resellers that I have talked to, as well as doing my own research online and figuring out what's working for some people and what's not working. You know, and I think this is something that you will kind of develop as you, as you go along as a jewelry reseller. You know, because what I do now is so different from what I did when I first started. You know, even just the way I run my business, the way I source jewelry, um, all of those things have become much more defined as I have progressed in my jewelry reselling career. Now, I'm even at a point now where I'm trying to make a decision like, do I want to continue doing this as a full time thing? Or do I want to move into something else and maybe make this a part time thing? You know, because uh, as much as I love jewelry and as much as I love reselling, I don't know if I see myself doing this long term. And because of that, because now if I'm considering my jewelry reselling business um, like either a part time thing or a side gig thing, that's going to give me a lot more flexibility as it relates to my pricing because I will be able to maybe sit on pieces longer because I may not need the money right away, you know, or um, maybe I want to scale down my jewelry reselling business and I want to only have a certain amount in my inventory. And so I need to kind of move the the pieces that are just not worth my time. You know, I want to maybe sell those pieces off or, or figure out Uh, like I said, a bundle or a discount strategy so I can really just focus on the types of pieces I want to sell or the amount of jewelry that I want to sell. All right, so again, depending on what your plans are as it relates to your business and as it relates to you in your life right now, those things are gonna impact uh, your pricing and how quickly you want to move your jewelry pieces. Okay, so think about that too. Think about what makes sense for you at this point in your life. And if you are planning on doing this full time or you want to scale your business up, that's going to be a whole nother different type of pricing strategy as well. Because now we're talking about selling more, like either selling um, higher price pieces or, or increasing the volume of the pieces we are selling. All right, and that's a whole nother pricing strategy as well. Again, but it's gonna depend on the jewelry inventory pieces that you currently have and what you will plan to acquire 
as you grow your business or scale your business up. Okay, so there's a lot to think about with this, all right? And it will take you some time. It's probably not something that you're going to figure out overnight. It may take you days. It could take you a couple weeks. It may even take you a month to figure out what's going to work, all right? But remember, we can always tweak as we go. We can always pivot and we can make adjustments. And we're never locked into anything as it relates to being a jewelry reseller. All right, jewelry friends, well, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope it was helpful and it gave you some things to think about. Like I said, I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to read some of your comments or some of your ideas on how you price your jewelry and let me know what's working for you and let me know what isn't working for you because I think that information will be helpful for all of us. All right, so don't forget to head on over to the website. There's a lot more information for you over there, and that is jewelryresellerspodcast.com. And again, if you have any questions or if there is anything I can do to help you, please don't hesitate to reach out. All right, jewelry friends, thank you so much. I'll check in with you again really soon.